Petrol prices soar. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I'm on to my second stein of coffee for the day, but you know, powering through for a Friday, doing well. I thought we'd have a look at this article about petrol prices remaining high despite oil prices you know, dropping back down because with the recent attacks on oil production facilities you know the, the price spiked up spiked up on the monday morning after the attack and it kind of settled a bit back down kind of settled a bit back down i mean let's, let's jump over to we'll go to my favorite website and let's just have a look one of my favorite websites training economics and we will look at the commodity price for oil we'll look at you know we've got uh, brent and crude let's just jump to brent we can see the historic data or if we go back to the chart you can see that jump there and the historic data you can see how it's been traveling so it's not that much higher than where it's been for the last few months go to 10 year max 60 bucks and there you go we've got a max data so it was a lot lot lower back there <laughs> than now but nonetheless petrol prices are still a lot higher so let's have a look petrol prices stay high despite global oil prices falling to pre-attack levels now one one point to raise just about this is oil production you know you look at the trend in the past whenever there were there were issues prices spiking up but if we look at just who produces we'll, we'll jump back here we'll look at crude because that's what we'll talk about crude oil look at the historic data you can see here how it's going we'll go out to max range I mean, there you go. You can see there's no surprises. All the, you know, look at that. Boom. Look at that. Right back to the 80s. Now, we'll look at the Observatory of Economic Complexity and let's have a look at crude petroleum. But before we do that, we'll jump to here because whenever you go to this website to look for different products, it just brings one up by random and it brought up roof tiles, <laughs> which I was surprised that Germany was the top exporter of roof tiles and the top importer is Poland. So you learn something new every day. Thumbs up if that's something you had no idea about. But um, we'll have a look at crude petroleum. So the exporters and the market value. I mean, the top exporters, Saudi Arabia, then Russia, Iraq, Canada, United Arab Emirates. The top importers are China, the United States. Now, my understanding is that Canadian production has significantly increased and United States production has also increased significantly in the last few years. So their dependence on Saudi Arabia and other traditional oil producing countries has waned. We're no longer as dependent on them or the States is no longer as dependent on them as they were in the past. Let's have a look at this article. So petrol prices were quick to rise after the drone attack but have been slow in following the oil price back down. Less than two weeks after the biggest supply disruption in the history of the oil trade, global benchmark prices have gently settled back to where they were before the drone attacks on Saudi facilities. The subtlety of the shift may be lost on most Australian motorists who are still paying well above pre-attack prices. In Melbourne, unleaded prices are still hovering around $1.60 per litre, having peaked at $1.72 per litre in some service stations. According to the ACCC, ACCC, sorry, petrol price cycle data, the average Melbourne price was $1.30 a litre just before the squadron of drones set forth with the facilities at the Abik and Kurharis oil fields in their crosshairs on the September 14. So you can see this is when they had the attack. And there's petrol prices in Melbourne in melbourne so when oil traders scrambled to their computers on monday morning after the weekend raid the global benchmark and the most important price on asian markets brent crude jumped from 60 dollars a barrel to 68 dollars 40 the best part of 20 percent higher it was still above us 69 a few days later but has been on a downward trek ever since as markets respond to soothing words from various Saudi sources saying production was coming back online more quickly than expected. The message doesn't appear to have filtered through to Australian browsers as quickly. So here is the, the Brent price over the past two weeks. And there you go. 
boom. Bit of action, down. Wonder who made some money there. Look, that's the profit they took. <laughs> so tracking why prices rocket up and trend warily down is a complex issue made more difficult by the various margins and costs extracted between the oil well and cashier at the service station. Along the way, traders, the shipping lines, refiners, wholesalers and retailers all clip the ticket and finger pointing is a relatively easy way to deflect blame. The big vertical integration energy corporations capable of extracting a margin at pretty well every pit stop along the way can just throw their hands up and argue it's the market. So, time to buy shares in oil companies, guys. <laughs> Traders margin. One of the greatest ways to make a quid on an Asian trading desk is to buy oil at cheaper rent crude prices and sell at tapas premium. It's a financial engineering trick easily achieved by traders who never hold the physical com commodity, but flip contracts around their screens. Tapis is a thinly traded, sweet, low sulfur fuel priced out of the Singapore market. It's premium above Brent, which, which currently works out at six, per, 6 cents per litre at the pump, is commonly cited as a reason why Australian fuel prices are high. Not everyone buys that. The fact that a reserve bank uses Brent rather than Tapas to track oil prices and their impact on the Australian economy tells you what it thinks is important and to a large extent blows away the cloud of confusion caused by referencing Tapas prices. So there's Tapas crude and there's Brent. Refiner's margin. One phenomenon that is difficult to explain in the current cost spurt is the large expansion in the gap between the unrefined oil price and the refined fuel prices in Australia. Well, perhaps, perhaps the fact that we've got such significant taxes on petrol, maybe, maybe. The gap could loosely be described as the refiner's margin. The under, using Australian Institute of Petroleum Data, and yes, Tapas is its oil benchmark, the margins has expanded noticeably for unleaded fuel, but less for diesel. The diesel margin was already pretty juicy. Disruptions such as the one in Saudi Arabia can cause shortages in different pockets of the market. But what can be drawn from the recent unleaded margin expansion is refiners have very significant power and leverage over prices. According to leading fuel analyst Jeff Trotter, while trading and wholesale margins have not moved much in the past two weeks, there has been a fair bit of action at the refinery and retail parts of the pipeline. Mr. Trotter, the general manager of the hydrocarbon pricing intelligence business FuelTrack, says adjusting prices for currency, the refining margin contributing contributed 2.5 cents per litre at the Australian unleaded pump before the attack. After the attack, that has blown out to 7.5 cents per litre. The Australian dollar has not had a significant impact. It is all about the underlying margins being achieved at the refineries and retail levels, Mr. Trotter said. The oil companies have something of a windfall since the drone attacks, while motorists have suffered. So I mean, there you go, there's a refinery margin before, and there's the refinery margin after. Interesting, very interesting. So guys, who's buying shares in oil companies? Retailers margin. Leading up to the attacks, the terminal gate price for unleaded fuel was around 129 per litre, while the price at the pump was as low as $1.30. In other words, a fairly skinny retail margin of five to six cents a litre. Mr. Trotter said, not long after the drones hit, wholesale price, prices rose to 138 per litre, while retail prices exploded, particularly in Melbourne, where they fell just shy of 172 per litre. In Brisbane, it hit 178 at some outlets. Damn. I'm I, In some ways, I'm glad I work from home now. <laughs> I don't know. My petrol costs have just disappeared. Given it was the same fuel that had already landed and was either at the terminal or already in tanks under the service station, some pretty hardy, handy profits were booked on existing supplies. The retail margins, margins went from a few cents a litre to more than 30 cents a litre in Melbourne. In Brisbane, 42 cents a litre, Mr. Trotter said. Sydney, which operates on a different fuel price cycle, hasn't seen those prices yet, but Mr. Trotter said it is probably only a matter of time. Retailers move so quickly, they can book that stock profit on, on what they already have been stored, he said. Well, 
Yeah, there you go. Look at those margins. That's pretty good. There are other factors. Retailers. BP, the only major retailer to respond to ABC's inquiry about the recent price rise, says it aims to always be competitive and attract customers to our sites. It depends on your definition of competitive. Certainly, dead heats can be exciting, but when every retailer move, moves in lockstep and discounting is only marginal, then the thrill for the motorist is somewhat diminished. So, generally speaking, the price of the pump is impacted by a number of different factors, in particular international uh, product prices and competition between service stations in the local area, a BP spokesman responded in a written statement. There are also other factors, including exchange rates, taxes, and local operating costs, the BP spokesman added. It is reasonable to point out, while there are around 1,400 BP branded fuel and retail sites across Australia, 350 are owned by the company. The rest are independent businesses setting their own prices. However, it is also reasonable to mention, over the course of the past fortnight, the Australian dollar traded in a reasonably narrow 1% band against the US dollar, and tax structure remained unchanged and so did labor costs. Other big retailers including Caltex, Viva Energy, own, owner of the Shell retail franchise, were unavailable or unwilling to comment. So what's next? The market is now weighing up security and supply issues against mounting pessimism about global economic growth and flagging demand for oil. Respected global oil analyst Energy Aspects said the market remains deeply skeptical as to whether uh, Riyadh's claim of a full return to oil production by the end of the September is credible. It suggests expert analysts indicate damage assessment alone should have taken weeks and many spare parts may not be on hand for the repair job. Energy aspect estimate, estimates of the 5.7 million barrels per day production or 6% of global supply knocked out by the drones between only 2.5 and 3 million barrels is back online. Big investment bank JP Morgan agrees, but says the impeding US-China trade talks may have a bigger price driver in the near term. It's betting that price will fall more. Oil sits at the low end of a three-year trading range of $55 to $80 US a barrel, despite multiple sources of supply stress, a 50% cut in Venezuelan output, a 30% drop in Iranian exports, the equivalent impressive gains in US output, annual growth, rate of around 1.3 million barrels per day, plus slowing demand growth. JP Morgan's head of oil market research, Mr. AD, told clients. With signs of geopolitical tension easing, tanker rates for key Middle East to Asian routes have declined, and near-term call premium for Brent has also fallen, he said. That said, while we continue to believe that Saudi supply will take closer to three months to normalize, the threat of future trade tensions and their knock-on effects to global growth and business sentiment could accelerate the weakness we observed in oil demand earlier this year. So 50-50 bet. CBA's commodities analyst Vivek Da said the next significant shift in price is a 50-50 bet. How believable is the Saudi production recovery? There are certainly incentives to push a positive story as the Amco IPO, the partial stock market float of the Saudi oil industry is not far off, he said. While the Saudis have, have done, what the Saudis have done has made it uh, not so much a supply issue, but a geopolitical issue. The focus will now shift to US-China talks as the key price driver. This means, according to Mr. Da, that the geopolitical focus is on further trade tensions, a slowing global, a global economy and weaker demand. CBA has the oil price slippage slipping further to US 55.60 a barrel range in the first quarter of next year. Just don't expect prices to fall as dramatically as the pump as they have risen in recent weeks. So guys, what do you think? What do you think? Some people are saying it's all a bit of a, you know, an opportunistic take by the, by the uh, retailers and the refiners. Perhaps it is, you know. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.